Now, one of the organizations protecting our planet is the Rainforest Alliance. It's best known for its food label, exactly what we were just discussing, featuring a green frog. More than two million farmers around the world have been certified by the Rainforest Alliance for following its sustainability standards. And you can find products with the seal now in more than 100 countries. And joining us now is the Rainforest Alliance CEO, Santiago Gowland. Santiago, great to have you with us. What do we need to understand about what you do and what that green frog represents, whether it's on the part of the retailers where we buy products or for the farms that are producing the, the materials, the raw materials? Hello, Julia. Thanks so much for this. And first of all, kudos for dedicating your channels to Call to Earth. We did more of these initiatives to, you know, get into mainstream media. And, uh, you know, it's also very timely with the COP26 happening right now in Glasgow, where nature-based solutions, everything that has to do with the role nature plays in mitigating climate change, which can add up to 37% of the climate mitigation, is front and center of the COP discussions. So the Rainforest Alliance for more than 35, for more than 30 years, has been working on this food and agriculture sectors and forestry sectors in the tropical forests. And as you know, tropical forests like the Mayan forest or the Amazon or the Congo Basin are crucial to climate biodiversity, but also livelihoods. More than 1.5 billion people live in this uh, tropical forest, 1 billion of which live in poverty. So what the Rainforest Alliance does is work at the supply level with farmers, really supporting them on technical assistance to um, employ um, you know, sustainability practices like agroforestry or regeneration. But we also work at the demand level giving people, citizens, an easy choice to support the work that's going on on the ground. And we work also at the market rules, advocating to align policies and voluntary standards to these sustainability practices. And how do you verify that those standards are being kept to? So if someone sees the green frog and says, OK, I know that this is abiding by your standards, how do we know actually that you're going into these communities and that you're ensuring that the practices that you're promising are, promising are being followed? Yes, the certification is not a silver bullet, of course, yeah. but uh, it does kind of uh, work with farmers through auditing systems and assurance and verification and traceability to uh, address these issues and uh, surface them and then design interventions to solve them. Those could be, you know, deforestation issues, etc. And we use both uh, auditors, but also technology like uh, satellite technology to look at those things. Now, of course, some of those issues are deeply rooted. They are systemic in some of the countries and communities in which we work, which are high risk. And uh, so it's never perfect. And that's why we need a shared responsibility in all the actors in the supply chain and working with governments and multilaterals to address some of those root causes to some of the uh, unsustainable practices. You know, I was looking at your website and two of the things that struck me, not only as you've said to help these farmers and these communities mitigate the impact of climate change, but it's also f to adapt for the impact of climate change too. And I think we need to talk about these as two separate things and understand understand what's going on. How well are we tackling the adaption part of the climate change situation? And how do you do that? It's interesting because uh, right now, as you know, climate change is affecting many of these communities from floods to fires to you name it, right? So the Rainforest Alliance has in its uh, standards technical assistance for adaptation, climate adaptation, that goes all the way from agroforestry. So for example, growing coffee or cocoa and the shade of trees, which not only increases carbon sequestration, but also boosts biodiversity and increases productivity on those communities because those landscapes become more resilient to water, to rain control, water absorption and regulation, to fighting fires, etc. So it's a kind of a win-win right now to apply nature-based solutions to enhance productivity, which increases livelihoods, and in doing so, tackle climate and biodiversity goals. Yeah. 
I know you have so much going on. Come back and talk to us, please. We will continue the conversation. Great to have you on the show today, the CEO of the Rainforest Alliance, Santiago Garland. Thank you, sir.